Hi students, just to do a simple recap of the topic that we went through previously on the structure of balance of payment. So what I've gone through is when there is a deficit or a balance of payment surplus, right? This is known as balance of payment disequilibrium. So let us look at the next part whereby what causes the balance of payment disequilibrium. So it could be due to a current account disequilibrium or a capital and financial account disequilibrium or it could be actually due to the both or uh, both accounts facing disequilibrium so shall we look at the first part whereby which are the factors that affect the current account all right the first factor is changes in the terms of trade terms of trade is the quantity of ex the of import that can be exchanged for one unit of export so it is given by the ratio of the export price index to the import price index. So therefore, if there is an improvement in the terms of trade, it would means that the country would able to earn more from the export relative to the to its expenditure on imports. So assuming that demand remains unchanged, this will actually lead to an improvement in the current account, meaning to say that there will be a current account surplus. However, on the other hand, if there is a decline, a decline in the terms of trade, right? It would means that the country would earn less from the exports relative to the expenditure on its imports. So if the same thing, assuming that demand remains unchanged, isn't any shift in the demand, it would be uh, like, likely to experience a trade deficit, meaning to say that there is a current account deficit. So, the developing countries that rely on the agricultural exports, they have the tendency to face persistent trade deficit because of the unfavorable terms of trade when they are trading with the when they are trading with the industrial nations. Because when they are trading with the industrial nations, their export earnings are insufficient. Their in export earnings are insufficient to pay for their imports of the manufactured goods. Alright, the next factor is actually relative inflation rates. Please note the word relative because we are actually comparing the increase in the price level as compared to the trading partners. So assuming that there is a domestic inflation, what will happen is the prices of the exports will be relatively more expensive compared to the other products in other countries. While the prices of the imports will be relatively more um, uh, less expensive or rather relatively cheaper. So therefore, in this case, right, when the prices of exports uh, become more expensive, there will be a decrease in the quantity demanded and hence export revenues will decrease. While on the other hand, when the imports become cheaper, there will be an increase in the imports and therefore the import expenditure will increase. Because of this, right, there is a worsening of the current account possibly leading to a deficit and therefore balance of payment disequilibrium. However, in order to have this in order to have this analysis to be accurate, what would be the implicit assumptions? So for this to happen right, when export revenue falls given a uh, in, in increase or rather the prices of export become more expensive right we are looking at the demand for export is relatively more price elastic demand for export to be relatively more price elastic therefore when the price become more expensive there will be a decrease in the quantity demanded and uh, more than proportionally and hence export revenue will decrease on the other hand, the import demand for import will be price elastic as well. So therefore, when the, the prices of the import become relatively cheaper, there will be an increase in the expenditure given an increase in the demand for the products. Okay, the next factor is the relative incomes whereby we are looking at the national income of the domestic economy is actually increasing faster than the trading partners meaning to say that in the domestic uh, economy the income increase faster than the incomes of those people who are living in the other economies or rather with the uh, other country in the other countries so therefore in this case right the demand for imports in our country uh, uh, will increase faster than the demand for export Alright, uh, demand for imports will increase faster than the demand for export. However, what are the implicit assumptions over here? Given that there is an increase in the um, domestic, um, the income in the dom domestic economy.
Well, the implicit assumption, it means that over here when I look at export or imports, or rather imports and exports, uh, the goods and services, they are actually normal goods. Meaning to say that when there is an income, increase in income, the demand for import, or rather the, the, um, the demand for them to import the normal goods will increase because these are actually normal goods. So on the other hand, uh, because of this, right, the import expenditure will increase faster than the export revenue because of the increase in the imports and hence leading to the worsening of the current account again and therefore leading to the BOP deficit, uh, BOP deficit current account deficit and BOP disequilibrium. Alright, the next point is the relative productivity whereby given a country with the poorer skills or rather poorer skills of the workforce, inferior uh, technology and inefficiency, the country export become less competitive to the other countries. The country um, products become less competitive as compared to the other countries and therefore this will lead to a decrease in their exports and could be worsening their country current account and eventually leading to a current balance of payment deficit. Next, physical destruction. Given the destruction of the infrastructure, buildings, factories, so on and so forth due to um, a natural disasters this will actually destroy the products or destroy the infrastructure that is used to build the um, goods and services and hence require them to increase their imports for capital reconstructions and worsening leading to a worsening of trade deficit and hence therefore balance of payments a uh, decrease or rather um, worsening of balance of payments the next point persistent overvaluation or undervaluation of the currency so it prevents the automatic corrections of BOP disequilibrium by the exchange rate movement so in this case let me explain further when there is an overvaluation of the currency it means that the currency is actually uh, of a higher value so therefore this makes the country exports this overvaluation of the currency makes overvaluation of the currencies uh, make the country exports less competitive to the other country and therefore it could actually leading to a balance of payment trade a balance of payment deficit on the other hand if there is an undervaluation of the currency it means that as compared to the price of the exports to the other countries it become um, more competitive and therefore this might lead to balance of payment surplus on the other hand uh, long-term changes in the in in the trade patterns so when there is a long-term changes in the demand or the country competitiveness can also lead to a persistent balance of payment disequilibrium for example some of the reasons of why there might be a long-term changes in the trade patterns it could be due to the changes in the consumer taste preference or the change in the quality and the nature of the goods or it could be due to the technological changes so therefore in this case right if um, the country goods become less less competitive then the, uh, the other countries goods and services that are no longer in demand so hence um, balance of payment would be worsened leading to a trade deficit Next, it will be factors affecting the capital and financial account. So just to recall what is meant by the capital account. So capital account consists of the capital transfer, the acquisition or the disposal of the non-produced or non-financial assets. So it, it includes the transfer of the ownership of the fixed uh, assets and like uh, disposal of the fixed assets. On the other hand, uh, financial account actually uh, records the international investment and transactions in the financial assets and liabilities for example uh, stocks and bonds so therefore what would be the first factor that actually affect the uh, capital and financial account it is actually the difference between the expected rate of returns on the investment what is meant by the differences so therefore in this case when there is a change to the like for example a positive expectation on the country growth uh, and the demand condition is good so it may actually attract the foreign direct investment into the country so therefore in this case there will be a inflow of capital in capital inflow 
On the other hand, if there is political instability or high inflation, meaning to say that prices are actually increasing, it will actually lead to a negative expectation about the future returns. And hence, therefore, this will actually lead to capital outflow. So, uh, various factors such as the government policies on economic incentives, uh, taxes and cost of reductions and even political stability, right, they can actually affect the investment prospects. Alright, the next factor um, is actually the relative interest rate, whereby looking at the disparity between the interest rate leading to a short-term capital flows. So, uh, let me explain this in further, whereby in this case, of the interest rate arbitrage uh, whereby there is a differences between the interest rate what the investor or rather the trader will do right is for the currency with a lower interest rate the trader will actually borrow money to pay interest on the currency on the lower interest rate and use it to actually buy currency with a higher interest rate so therefore he's able to capture the difference between the true interest rate and then earn from the differences so just uh, this is actually the explanation that I mentioned is to buy and hold on a currency with the higher interest rate and for extended period so that they are able to profit from the differences in the interest rate offered by the two currencies. So hence, if the interest rate in uh, other countries is actually higher, there will be a short term capital flow overseas to that economy as people prefer to hold their money in the foreign currency to earn the higher returns and this worsen the balance of pay um the financial account balance whereby causing a deficit in the balance of payment all right uh, the last factor will be the expected movement in exchange rates so in this case right the short term capital is extremely sensitive to the expectation of changes in the exchange rate so in this case right when there is an increase or expectations of the increase in the external values of the currency meaning to say that they expect the currency to appreciate it will cause the speculators or the investor to put their money into that currency so what would they do is leading to a short term capital inflow so in in this currency, the, the domestic country, in the current the economy itself, right, there will be an increase in the capital inflow and therefore leading to the improvement in the financial account and balance of payment surplus. On the other hand, if the foreign exchange values of the currency is expected to fall, meaning to say that there is an expectation of the currency to depreciate, investors will convert their assets. They will convert their assets to into another currency to avoid capital loss. And therefore, this will lead to a, a deficit in the financial account worsening the balance of payment. So I have come to the end of my presentation on the causes of um, balance of payment disequilibrium. Just to give a summary, we actually look at the factors that affect the current account as well as the factors that affect the capital and financial account. So what is more important for you to know at this point of time is to understand what is current account, what consists of in, in the current account and what does the capital and finance financial account consists on of and therefore this will actually help you to understand further in details the about the factors affecting these accounts so um, if there is anything that you do not understand please feel free to uh, approach me to clarify or to revisit the video again for better clarifications thank you